Now, first things first, uh, what you need most in the beginning of the track is your left uh, browser view here where you can start dragging your samples over and stuff like that. So let me explain that real quick. There's a couple of buttons here. The first one, of course, hides or shows the browser. I've already explained this one. Then the second one uh, holds three folders. These will always be the same. And the first one is uh, holds the instruments that come with Ableton Live. Um, if you have the Ableton Live suite, you will find that all these are there. If you're running Ableton Live LE or any other version, you'll probably miss those. I would highly recommend upgrading to Ableton Suite to have all these powerful instruments. Second are MIDI effects. Whenever you start playing with your sampler or any other instrument in live, it's usually controlled by MIDI, and these effects are what you can use to get some really cool um, sounding things out of your MIDI devices or uh, software instruments. Then third are the audio effects, and Ableton Live comes with a huge list of built-in audio effects. Uh, no need for secondary plugins or you know uh, third-party stuff. It comes with very powerful plugins that um, have all kinds of presets assigned to them that you can already use and we'll look in these, into these three a little later. Then the second one over here is the little uh, plug symbol and that's your plug-in devices. Now by default when you install Ableton it's not activated. When you hit the activate button it will bring up your preferences and if you go down to where it says plug-in sources that's where you can um, activate your plug-in devices. So for example here it says use audio units. If I turn that on you can see immediately on the left that a couple of devices are turned on. Um, then if you have VST plugins, you can turn those on. Um, your, your computer will probably have to calculate for a little bit, just like mine is doing right now. And it's going to look over the hard drive in the system to find um, VST plugins. And as you can see now, it already found a folder. And then um, if you have any VST plugins that are somewhere on the drive and not in the default system folder, then you can use a custom uh, path and then turn this one on but I'll leave it off for now so this will give you all the devices as you can see I have a couple of VST devices installed uh, and we'll look into those later as well and you can use these as instruments then there's three buttons the one two and three browser buttons that look the same and they actually do the same they're three browsers um, and maybe you're thinking well what, what I need three browsers for is one not enough no exactly one is not enough um, if you're working with a lot of samples it's very handy to have three browsers because they remember the position they were at last so you can quickly switch between those uh, to find what you're looking for if you double click on one of them it will make that the default or I will remember that as as the path. If you don't want that, you can just twirl open using the little twirl uh, triangles, and you can find all of your samples here. Um, and then the last button is the refresh button. That really doesn't uh, do anything, but it it, it just um, puts everything back to default. But it also refreshes if you have new devices installed or any samples. So that's what the the browser does. Um, Next, let it, let's get into making, making a little bit of sound. 